Hi everyone, I uh, just had a, a rummel through some old bits and pieces I have and I uh, came across these. Now, many years ago I used to write for a, a magazine called Trout and Salmon and uh, they asked me if I could basically design a fly or some flies that would suit the hill locks in Scotland. Now, the, you can see the tartan at the top of these and uh, I sent these three flies, three styles and colours that basically you couldn't go far wrong with. Obviously this one here, uh, I mean the names, I didn't name them, they named them. Hector's Redhead, which is <laughs> call it what you like, but it's basically a black pen on the way. Uh, the tail been moved, a bit of red at the head is a naming point. It was a kind of mix of a couple of flies that I fished. And uh, so that was one of the flies. Uh, the other one was the Scotch Midge, this one. Again, it was another pattern, but they, they had some modern materials within them, uh, getting away from the traditional ones. The actual, this, there is actually a, one of the fly, I don't know if you can see it there, but the actual fly they tied, the company, uh, Turrell, who was doing, the, the, produced the flies, obviously, and obviously paid for the advert. Now, uh, the other thing, it was to, uh, there was a prize at the back, you can see there, Turrell fly tying kit. So on, but anyway, it was a way back, 1998 this, so, uh, so it might even go further back than that, so it's a few years ago, so it's good fun to come across these things. Uh, but one of the flies, uh, they, all, they all caught fish and I still tie them as I say, Scottish Midgen, the, the other one I still tie. The, this one, uh, it's been a wee while since I tied this one, though I have tied it, I haven't filmed it, so I'm going to film this today. Uh, and you see, they called it the Basset Fly, but I have no idea why. And uh, it, it's, a, again, it's, it's a kind of cross between two or three flies. Um, I'd probably say the Dubri, it's as close to the Dubri uh, as, as it could go. But again, it was just uh, using modern materials, like in the body, instead of a gold tinsel, so I used the, the light bright. And that was that sort of idea. So anyway, I'm going to tie it, so I'm going to zoom in so you can obviously see it. And uh, it's a good fly, a good top dropper pattern, uh, it's been a palmer. So thread, obviously start at the, the eye, and we just come down, put a good layer of thread down, all the way down the shank. The tail is a golden pheasant crest, so I've got some on my desk here. It's got a nice crest feather, nice curl on it. Oops. Tail length. Uh, round about, I would say, round about the, between the hook and the, the body length, round about that. Now, I usually do a turn on top, but onto the, the, the bare hook itself, but then come underneath the tail fibres and pull towards the, the eye of the hook, and then a turn on top. And that basically lifts it. Now, I'm just checking the length. At this point, you can actually pull it in if you want, so it's too long. That's about fine, that'll do it. I like a good tail in the fly, so trim away, but I usually trim at the length of the body. Now I rub the, the fly with a black wire. In this case I'm going to be using this one. This is a, an ultra wire in black, it's a small, which is ideal for it. So you want it to obviously show. Again, just tie a length on, so it's the length of the body, so you have no steps. But what I'm going to do is tidy up, quickly running up. Coming back down, ready to tie in the, the flash, in this case, this is one, this, this is a nice colour, it's a nice warm gold as you can see. This one here is from F&F, here &F. Uh, yeah. and it's just called, you know, if you wait, it's called fry gold, so there we are. So it's a nice colour, you don't need too much, it's enough to form the body, so just pull it off. And it dubs really easy, just... Obviously anchor it at the bottom of your finger and thumb, just hold it and then twist the one way and it will roll itself round the thread. It can be as light or as thick as you want. Just slide it up. And you can, once you've got it basically caught at the shank, you can then tighten to that point. And don't worry if you see the, the fire on thread through it. It probably will all seep through the colour, so that's what you want. I'll just run it up, get a nice shape in the body, take away the excess, just make sure your thread's out of the way, I just pull it and then trim it away, 
and then set that on my desk for the next flight and there we are the body hackle I'm just using a Chinese crock hackle you could use a saddle whatever you like this is a really nice warm orange hot orange need enough burnt orange that one so just bear the, take the fluff away obviously leave some of the stem so you can tie it in use my hackle pliers here just to tie it on now you, you want to it may roll on you a wee bit but don't worry about that turn or two at the top and then just quickly come through to into the third turn here but before we do that come round with the wire straight turn at the back and then you want to rib the body you want to see the rib this black rib it does add a bit to the fly and then we can trim away or break away the tip stroke back we don't want obviously any fibres going forward the way you do is bring your wire straight up follow it with the thread and then bend the wire 90 degrees and that will lock in the tight, the turns, the rib wind to the eye bend and break away your wire come back up ready to tie in my hen hackle or a cock hackle either will work get some hen hackles here and you want the fibre length you want it longer than the the cock hackle just going to tie it in by the tip I usually just catch it and fold back the tip of the hackle you can bring it out and trim it away Oops. and get the hackle pliers I mean you can do it by hand but I'll do the hackle pliers because it takes my fingers out of the way then we can stroke the fibres back as I say don't be shy with the length you want a nice length on it with nice straight turns you're happy and then catch it in two or three turns Fibres have got quite long there at the bottom, but don't worry too much. A couple of turns there, fold it back again, just build up the head with the fire orange thread. Now, keep the thread tight, you can actually break this off. And then we straighten for it finish. And don't worry about the head size, I mean, you want nice, you want to be able to see the fire orange thread. Trim away. There you go. A nice shape. And uh, it'll swim well. Good dropper fly. If you're fishing to cast the flies, I would normally put a fly like this in the top dropper. And just some varnish all the way around. And there we go. And that's uh, the basset flies, they called it. A bit of fun. To say very dubry like can't get away from that. Uh, it's a well known fly up. Uh, it was tied by Stan Headley and uh, fishes well. As I say, this was like, we could call it a pretty slight variant. But as I as I say, it was a kind of mix of modern fibre and a mix of uh, just it's just common sense really. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, again, thanks for watching.